Hi, my little bugs. Um, ow, sorry, my cat just jumped on me, and he has long claws right now. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do a series of four videos. Um, I'm doing one on depression, one on rape, one on eating disorders, and one on anxiety. Um, I decided to do this because I think they are very important topics that are extremely prevalent in society today and they're taboo to talk about and so I think they need to be talked about. Um, my f videos, these four videos, the first half is going to be for those who are suffering and the second half is going to be for those who know somebody who is suffering. I think it's important to do it this way because recently I've discovered that because these things aren't often talked about, it's really hard to know how to react. It's hard to know how to react when you love someone with depression or you love someone who's been raped. Um, it's really difficult because nobody's talked about it your whole life. Nobody tells you how to deal with that. Nobody tells you how prevalent it is. And nobody tells you that most likely somebody you know is going to suffer from one of those things. And so... I think it's important to talk about, and I'm hoping that by doing the videos this way, I can reach a wider range of people. I hope that instead of just those who are suffering, I can also help those who know somebody suffering and help you know how to deal with it and how to help them out just from my own personal experience. Um, this first video I'm going to be doing is on depression. Um, I'm sure most of you know, but I've been suffering from depression since I was in 8th grade, so for 9 years now, I've been struggling with depression, and it's a constant battle. I've had it as a stable part of my life for 9 years, and that's an extremely hard thing to have. And so, I want you guys to know that I understand, that I'm here for you, that it's possible to have it for such a large part of your life, and to still live a good life, and still be happy and satisfied, and so, here we go. Um... When you have depression, I think it's really common to feel like you're alone, like you see the world differently than everybody else and things are harder for you than they are for most people, which in some regards is true. Um, but I think what's hardest for me is when I get really depressed, I feel alone and I feel like nobody will understand. And if I was to reach out to somebody, I feel like a burden to them. I feel like this is my problem to deal with and I need to deal with it on my own. And I don't want to drag somebody down with me. So I know what it's like to feel alone. Um, the truth is, research shows that one in four people suffer from a mental illness. So 25% of this world is suffering from a mental illness. I don't know how it is that one in four are suffering from a mental illness, and yet it's something that nobody talks about. Nobody talks about how hard it is. Nobody talks about how to deal with it. It's seen as something that you have to hide and keep to yourself because it's not good and it's not right. And you don't need to deal with it on your own. 25% of this world is suffering from a mental illness. 25%. That is a huge amount of people. You're not alone. No matter what they've programmed into our minds and told us to think, you're not alone. Just because it's not talked about doesn't mean people aren't suffering from it. And I pray more than anything that our generation is the one who breaks that, who breaks the silence and says, hey, this is a real thing. 25% of people are suffering from mental illnesses. It needs to be talked about. If you have depression, you're not alone. I, I guarantee that you know plenty of other people who are suffering from it. You're not alone. Um, I also know that when my depression gets really bad, um, most of you, I'm sure, are the same way, but it's kind of like a roller coaster. I'll go through really deep ruts, and then I'll be okay for a while, and then I'll go really deep ruts again. And So some things to remember if you're suffering right now. Take a shower if you haven't done it in a while. I know it sounds silly to those who don't have a problem doing that, but it's hard to remember. If you're trying to decide if you want to live or not, deciding to take a shower isn't something really on your mind. So if you need a reminder, take a shower. Wash the dishes if they've been piling up. Pick up your clothes. Um, talk to your friends that you care about and let them know that you're okay. 
because I think that's something that we really forget quite often. I forget to do that all the time. It's so easy to cut people out of my life because I feel like I'm not good enough for them that I don't actually remember that they genuinely care about me and there are people who genuinely care about you. Let them know that you're okay. Sleep earlier and get up earlier. A sleep routine helps tremendously. I didn't want to believe that for a long time because I didn't want to get into a sleep routine but lately I've been having to for work and it makes a tremendous difference. Having a sleep routine, I don't personally know why, but it makes a difference, so just try it. There's no harm in trying. Tell yourself you're going to go to bed within this hour every night and wake up within this hour every morning. Do it for a week, and I promise you, you will notice a difference. Um, read more. Stories let you know that you're not alone. You can see all my books lined up right there, and I have bins under my bed. Um... Stories, not only do they let you take a break and get into a different world for a little while, there's also these stories that show you that somebody has felt the way you have felt. You're not alone. They've felt that way so deeply and so purely that they've written about it and made a character about it and given it a name. And I think that reading is, first of all, it's good for you, but it really lets you know that you're not alone in this world. Um, eat well, eat healthy, know how to indulge. Um, I also forget to eat sometimes, not because I'm trying to binge or, or not because I'm trying to starve myself, but because when my depression gets bad, I don't feel hungry. I don't get that feeling. I will go eight hours, nine hours, and then I'll be like, oh, I haven't eaten anything. Remind yourself. Remind yourself to eat. If you need to set an alarm on your phone, do it because eating is extremely important. It's crucial to your well-being and it will only benefit you. Eat healthy. Eat good meals and know that you're allowed to eat that cookie if you want to eat that cookie. Um, indulge. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to your body. Giving yourself the nutrients you need will help your mm -hmm. depression get better. It helps. I promise you it helps. Um, pamper yourself. Give yourself one hour a week to unwind. Wash your hair, do your nails, shave your legs, drink tea, listen to music, write if you want to write, paint if you want to paint. Do something that's good for your soul. Do something that makes you feel content, that makes you feel happy. I know that sometimes it's hard to feel that way, but anything that gl gives you a glimmer of that, do it. Give that to yourself. Um, setting small daily goals and allowing yourself a smile for your achievements. I make lists about everything. Everything I write a list. And it's really helpful to me because I have a hard time feeling proud of myself because I set these huge unrealistic goals for myself and then I'm so disappointed when I can't accomplish them. So set small goals for yourself. I make lists that are like, Pick up your clothes off the floor. Clean your cat's litter box. Give him water. And everything I do, I just cross it off my list and I feel proud of myself. Let yourself have small achievements. The things that are easy for everybody else aren't necessarily easiest for us. So do them and be proud of yourself. Um, stay away from people who do not deserve you. You are worth more than that. More than anything, I think this is one of the biggest points that I can make. If people do not value you for the person you are, if you need to pretend around them, if you need to act like something you're not, if you need to hide your depression, hide your anxiety, hide whatever is going on with you, if you don't feel comfortable telling them that, if they don't respond well when you do tell them that, cut them out of your life. Life is so short and we are already struggling so much to find any sense of happiness that we can. Cut out the people who are not good for you. If they do not help you grow, if they do not flourish you, if they do not make you smile or make you feel good about yourself or show you your worth, then cut them out of your life. I promise you it is not worth it to keep them there. You are worth so much more. And having people like that just helps your depression to grow. Cut them out of your life and be proud of the person that you are. Only surround yourself with people who love you. Um, meet, your, meet new people and allow them to know you. I think I struggle with this 
amongst everything else. I don't have the energy most of the time to get out in order to meet new people. I don't want to go out in public places, but sometimes I think you have to force yourself to. I think that we get so comfortable in where our depression has us that we don't realize that sometimes we need to push past that zone. I think I need to remind myself that a lot, is to push past it and to go outside of your comfort zone because that's when growth happens. That's when change occurs. If you sit in the same place, things are not going to change. And so allow yourself to meet new people and don't pretend. Don't pretend to be happy. Don't pretend to be someone you're not. Let them, sell, let them have a real relationship with you. Let them know who you are on the inside. And if they do not respond positively, that is on them. That is not on you. And try, try, try again and again to learn to love yourself. Um, I know it's hard. It's something that I've been struggling with for a very, very, very long time in my life. But try and learn. Learn how to love yourself. Learn to look in the mirror and say you look beautiful today. Learn to feel smart and tell yourself you're smart. Learn to tell yourself you're talented. It'll help you. Um, well, that was 11 minutes of rambling. But now, this is the section about loving someone with depression. So I'm just going to list a billion things that I think will help. So let's go. Keep clutter at bay. Um, when you're depressed, tasks that may seem simple to you are extremely hard for them. If they have mail piling up, help them go through it. If their dishes are piling up, help them do it. If the trash needs to go out, if the laundry needs to be done, help them because they're not going to ask for it. They don't feel the desire. They don't feel the motivation. They don't feel safe asking. They don't feel like they deserve to ask, so please just try and do it without them needing to tell you to. Um, fix them a healthy meal if they haven't eaten. <clears throat> Feeding yourself and taking care of yourself is really hard to do when you're not sure if you even want to be alive. So fix them a healthy meal. Let them know that you're there and that they are loved by you. Get them outside because getting outside for a depressed person is huge and it's the last thing on earth that they're going to want to do. Take them in nature, pick them, pick them, pack them a picnic or take a hike with them. Um, let them feel the flowers and smell the flowers and increasing vitamin D can help alleviate depression. So get them outside. Ask them to help you understand what they're feeling. Encourage them to focus on self-care, hug them, laugh with them, reassure them that they, that you can handle their feelings because they might feel worthless, they might feel angry or guilty that they are even depressed in the first place. They're afraid to tell anybody and they're afraid that telling you will just make them feel like a burden to you and that it's just going to annoy you. So let them know that you can handle it. Challenge their destructive thoughts. If they're saying, I'm unlovable, or I'm a failure, or I'm ugly or stupid, say, you're not unlovable. I love you. You're not ugly and you're not stupid. I'm so proud of you and all you've accomplished. Remind them why you love them. Don't tell them just to try and think positively, because that does not work. I can tell you from personal experience that that will make them more angry and more depressed than anything else. Telling someone with depression that they don't have enough to be depressed over, that there's so many reasons to be happier, that they don't have it that bad, or all they have to do is just be happy, just choose to be happy. It's not necessarily that easy. Depression is a medical condition. It's not something that we choose to feel. Nobody chooses to wake up each morning not sure if they want to be alive or make it through the day. Nobody chooses to cry themselves to sleep or to get so numb that they don't even know what feeling is. I have had my depression for nine years. I don't even know who I am without it. So please, 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 above all else, do not make it seem like you can just get over it because you would not tell someone with cancer just to get over it or it's not that bad. This is a medical condition, and it's something to be taken seriously. And I really think that's the most important thing for people to know. 
Don't wait for them to reach out to you. Reaching out can feel impossibly daunting for someone with depression. Even if they want companionship, it is so, so hard to ask for it. Um, don't diminish their experiences like I used to feel like you but I got through it or everybody has bad days. It doesn't feel that way when you're going through it. It doesn't feel like you'll just get past it or everybody has this. It feels like you're alone in the world. So remind them that they're not. Do not make jokes about suicide or self-harm. They're not funny. I promise you that they are not funny and with one in four people suffering from a mental illness, you do not want to lose the trust of the people that you love and the people around you because I guarantee if you are making a joke about self-harm or making a joke about suicide that you are just making them feel like they can never trust you again. Um, don't go too long without checking in because once again, they're not going to have the strength or the motivation or the determination to be telling you that they're okay. Check in. Let them know that you're still there, that you still love them. Remind them that you like them. I know that this is uncomfortable. I know that society doesn't teach you to just say, Hey, you know what? I really like you. Hey, I enjoy your presence. But we need it. People with depression are constantly questioning if the people around them truly care about them. Our minds are telling us 24-7 that nobody actually loves us. So remind them. Remind them constantly that you like them. Remind them to the point where you feel annoying because I promise you that they need to hear it. Remind them that they're beautiful or handsome. Remind them that they're smart and that they have things to offer this world and that you can't imagine a life without them. Don't get frustrated with their questions and fears. If they fear that you don't love them and they say it consistently, don't get mad and say, I love you, how else can I tell you? They have depression. They have a voice in their mind all day long telling them that you don't love them. So when they ask if you do, say yes over and over and over and over again. Patience is key. Don't make promises that you can't keep. If you love them and you know that you are going to be there for them no matter what, then be there for them no matter what. But please, please, please do not tell them that you're going to be there or make promises that you can't keep because they won't put the blame on you. They'll put it on themselves and they'll feel like they aren't good enough. So just be patient. Be calm. Um, if they are prescribed medication, make sure that they take it. I'm prescribed medication and sometimes I'll forget a day. Um, I know my pills I can't take with NyQuil, so I take it before bed. And if I'm sick, I'll take a NyQuil and I'll skip my pill. And I notice a huge difference the next day. Medication is extremely important. It's extremely important that it's taken every single day. At the same time, it, it helps um, if you do it within the same hour every day. So if they're prescribed medication, make sure that they're taking it. If they're not prescribed any medication and you feel like it would really help them out, you could always suggest seeing a psychiatrist. I know it may be uncomfortable for you to suggest that to them, but just say, hey, what's the harm in going one time just to see if maybe it will help you. Let them know that taking medication does not mean that they're weak. I struggled for years with getting on medicine because I wanted to fix this by myself. I wanted to be strong enough to do it on my own and I thought that taking medication made me weak or it meant that I couldn't handle it by myself or I needed some pills to fix me. But it's not the case. Depression is a mental illness. It's the chemicals in your brain when you are depressed and the way that your brain functions is different than a normal functioning brain. And so those medications help balance that out just like they would with anything else. It's not shameful. It doesn't mean you're weak. It just means that sometimes people need medicine to get better. Um, and most importantly, just remind them over and over again how much you love them. And I will remind you guys right now that I love you very, very, very much. And I know this is a 20 minute long video and so some people may not want to watch it all the way through, but I think it'll reach a wider variety of people and I hope that it helped you guys. And I love you so, so, so very much. I'm probably going to make my next video right now because I'm home alone. So I'll see you guys in a minute. Bye. <laughs>